It's Camille and today I'm doing a very exciting video because it's going to help at least somebody during quarantine. And yes, I am bleaching my roots. As you can tell, they are overgrown. Brad Mondo would be so annoyed if he saw me right now, so please stop tagging him in my videos. Just kidding, it's my dream for him to roast me. <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of you have color in your hair and can't go anywhere to get it touched up, so you're gonna have to do it yourself. I have lots of videos on my channel showing how to bleach your hair, tone your hair, dye your hair. And some of my videos, I really broke it down and got very detailed and just gave every single tip that I know and every optimized process. But this video is for beginners because I know a lot of people right now are learning to do it for the first time and I wanted to make a very simple version that's easy to follow. So I'm only going to be using products that you can get at one store. You can order it online. You mix two products, three if you're feeling fancy, I'll show you how, and I'm gonna walk you through the steps while doing my own. First things first, subscribe to my channel and then get on a t-shirt that you don't mind ruining. This is the same shirt I've been wearing for seven years every time I bleach or dye my hair. So all of you OGs are already familiar. If you don't already have a hair dye shirt, choose one and then stick with it so you don't ruin any other clothes. Next you wanna gather your ingredients and there are two essentials. You need bleach powder and a developer. So you're gonna mix these two, and just like a volcano in third grade science fair, they're going to like bubble and combust a little, and you're gonna have a chemical reaction. You paint it on your roots, and you wait. So that's the basics. Optionally, you can use this product, which is the Ion Absolute Perfection Booster, which is a dupe for Olaplex. This helps restore the bonds in your hair and prevent breakage and keeps your hair healthier during the process, so I would recommend this, but if you can't get your hands on it, you just need the two essentials. This is the step two that goes with the booster. So once you wash it out of your hair, you put this in like a conditioner. And the last things you'll need are a mixing bowl, non-metallic, one of these brush thingies, and some gloves so you don't burn your hands. We always use gloves when we bleach and sometimes use it for dye, only when there's a chemical reaction. If you're using a vegetable-based dye, you don't need it. If you're using a dye that you have to mix with peroxide, you need it. This is the Clairol Professional Extra Strength Powder Lightener, which is just fancy for bleach. It has a two on it because this is the double size. I usually buy things in bulk to save that money, get a lower unit price. If I'm gonna be bleaching my hair all the time, I might as well save some money. <laughs> on the back, it has details and instructions. It says extra fast lightning, so we're gonna see because I usually use a different bleach that I've gotten used to and wanted to switch it up. Also, this one is really easy to come by and you can get it at Sally's, you can buy it online. So I wanted to work with something that's really easy for beginners. It also says for professional use only and not for retail sale. I just buy it at Sally's, so I don't think either of those are true. It also has ratio information on the back, so it says to use six scoops of this to five fluid ounces of developer. I always read the instructions. You have to know what the rules are in order to break them, so it's always a good thing to start with the instructions as a beginner, and then however long you're dyeing your hair, you'll figure out if you should do a thicker consistency, if your hair doesn't like something, if it reacts differently to a product, but, just to start out, we're going to be safe and use the ratio that they recommend. And I also haven't had any issues with this ratio. Sometimes I use a scale to weigh out my ingredients because it's way more exact, but not everyone has a scale. It's not worth buying if you're just gonna do your hair during quarantine. So this is a really nice bucket. It's not a bucket, a uh, mixing bowl and it has markings on the inside. So it tells you how many fluid ounces and I'm going to pour my developer in here first because you can measure scoops with your eyeballs. You can't measure ounces with your eyeballs unless you're like really trained for um, liquid measuring. If you don't have a bowl like this, you can also use regular Tupperware, anything that's non-metallic. And if you want to measure, you can use a regular measuring cup, but make sure you wash it before you put food in there because you're not trying to bleach your organs. So I'm starting with my Blonde Brilliance 35 volume developer and I'm pouring five ounces into my mixing bowl. I don't wanna spill, but looks like this. And when you open this, it's in this plastic, time for gloves. 
and then we're doing six scoops of the powder. It almost fills up the bowl, so this is going to make a good amount of bleach and it's going to swell the longer it has a reaction. So this is probably the right amount for my hair because my roots are so neglected, but if you have shorter roots or you're trying to do a Frank Ocean type thing and you don't really have that much hair, then you probably don't need this much. I'm just gonna mix and mix and mix until it's smooth. I hate having lumps in my bleach. It just, it's lumpy and it doesn't spread on your hair evenly and then you get like weird spots of sadness. The paste is gonna turn out thicker than your mom and a lot of people like to have a more liquidy consistency, but because we're doing what the box recommended, excuse me, what the tub recommended, we're just gonna go with this. And after you're experienced with this, you'll wanna know for next time if you wanna do a more liquidy version of this formula. It's just whatever is easier to work with, but also this thickness helps make the color lift faster or more evenly. So once you got your mixture all mixed up, you want to start working a little bit quickly. And the first thing that you want to do is part your hair. So I have a center part right now and I'm going to do it into quadrants. So I'm going to part this half of my head in half, starting with my ear. Doesn't have to be perfect. You're just going to make it easier to bleach. And then I'm putting all of this up and I'm putting the front half into a bun to get it out of the way. Parting the other side, I'm doing the same thing on this side, putting it up in a bun. Then I'm putting the back right side in a bun. Doesn't matter if you do left or right. I like to start back to front because the hair in the back of my head takes longer to lighten and it's stronger than the front hair. So I'd prefer for the bleach to be on those roots for longer. I'm starting with this hair. I'm just using my hands to part it because it's way easier and faster. And you wanna work quickly with this stuff. Pretty much I'm going to paint all of the black roots and then not paint any of the part that's already lightened. So just starting the painting from this side. I like to kind of press some stuff on it and then even it out. And then I'm just very lightly blending these together. So it's a tiny overlap. Then I'm going to lay this section down and paint the back to make sure that it's very evenly coated. That's the most important thing. So I'm gonna do the same thing on all of the parts in the back using the same method. And not to rush you or anything, but you do wanna do this kind of quickly because you don't want the bleach to be developing on one area for way longer than the other part. So just be mindful of time. Back left is done. Time to do the back right. We are 25% there for round one. If you wanna watch my video on the more in-depth version of this, you can click the link in the description box. I show you how I normally do it with weighing everything out and describe all of the details behind the whys. And I think it's just really interesting to me, but this is just easier for at home and it's easier to follow for a beginner. But if you want more information, I would definitely check out that video. All done. That's the worst part because it's hard to see. I'm using mirrors, my sense of touch, my intuition, and my luck to get this done. Now you wanna take out a front section. This is definitely the most annoying part of being someone who changes their hair color a lot because my hair grows really fast, which I would love <laughs> if I wasn't a person who changed my hair color. So I'm constantly having to keep up with this, but at least I've learned a lot throughout all of the times that I have been bleaching my hair so I can go on the internet and share my tips with other people who want to bleach their hair. Also, if you want to see the color that I do after this, you can follow me on Instagram or subscribe to my channel and stay updated and watch the tutorial when I drop it. Also, comment down below what shows you're watching because 
I am running out of stuff to watch, honestly, and I need new recommendations, and I trust you guys. I feel like you guys have good taste if you're obviously on here watching my videos, so I do have one recommendation for you. If you guys haven't seen Dave, it's a show on Hulu with Dave, aka Lil Dicky, and it's pretty good. Comes out every Thursday. It's the only show that I've ever actually known what day it comes out because I'm all out of other shows, so I look forward to Thursdays now. <laughs> and if you do watch it, tweet me what you think. So that was exactly enough for three quarters of my hair. And this is what I have the front part looking like. You don't have to really worry so much about the tiny little baby hairs until round two because those are going to process super quickly and we don't wanna accidentally do two rounds on those because they will fry off and how are you gonna lay your edges if you don't have any? There we go, a new batch. And I cut the recipe into thirds because if that was enough to do three quarters of my hair, I have an equal part left, so that's one third. So here we are in the home stretch. We are almost finished. Normally I would recommend having some music on or watching a TV show or a movie in the background, maybe listening to a podcast. You can get smarter and get better at doing your hair at the same time, but I can't do that because you won't be able to hear me and YouTube will give me a copyright strike. So I'm just gonna sit here trapped in my head listening to my internal monologue instead. You wanna make sure you get around your ear because that's a place that people miss. And like that sideburn part, gotta go down for that. If you have the right ratio, the drier the ratio, the less it burns your skin. So right now I'm just chilling. Um, but if you do a wetter ratio, then you might not be chilling. I'm just gonna go over everything and make sure that it's even. That is the most important part about bleaching your hair. I'm going to leave this in for about 20, 25 minutes because we've already been processing for a while and it also depends what color your hair is. So since mine is really dark, I'm using a higher volume developer 35, which is pretty strong, but because I'm also using this in the mixture, it brings it down a bit. But if you already have light hair to begin with, you don't need to use a 35 volume developer or you don't need to leave it in for as long or maybe do two rounds. But since my hair is dark, we're doing two rounds of 35. After about 25 minutes, it's time to rinse it out and I'm using step two of the Absolute Perfection Color Sealer and I'm using that before I shampoo my hair to help repair bonds in my hair. Rinsing that out, putting in conditioner and waiting and letting my hair rest for a couple days before doing round two. So I waited four days, did two deep conditioning treatments, one keratin treatment, and I just redid all of the bleaching. My hair looks crazy right now. I know I look like a puffle from Club Penguin, but I promise this is gonna look so much better in the end. And this time I did my baby hairs, and I'm only letting them sit through this one process because they are babies and they cannot handle two. And then the last thing after this is toning my hair to get rid of all of the warm undertones. So I'm gonna wait one day and then I'm gonna tone my hair. This is what my hair looks like dry and I think it came out really well. I'm gonna show you all of the layers right now because just like an ogre, I have layers. This is the section of my hair that I just bleached and as you can see, the roots are very light and then it kind of fades to a, a light yellow. And that's because the heat from your head heats the bleach while it's on, so the roots always process the fastest. So once you get about three eighths of an inch away from your scalp, the rest of your hair is gonna process at this exact color. The rest is pretty light and that's from previous bleachings and you can see that the ends are still that light pink or orange that I had. So if you want, you can do the roots separately from any other part of your hair that you wanna do. If you're gonna do your whole head for the first time or if you're not going all the way white, that's something to consider. At this point, if you want, you can bleach that small section of hair that is slightly darker than your roots. So for me personally, this is all light enough, especially considering the color I'm doing next. So I'm leaving this as the base and then I'm gonna tone my hair right now. So what toning your hair does is it shifts this yellowness towards more of a cool tone and 
people use that to go from a warm bleach color to a neutral. And if you look at a color wheel, yellow is at the opposite of purple. So in order to neutralize this yellow, I'm using a lilac toner. My hair has already lifted enough. Lifted just means that it's light enough. So I'm using a five volume developer because this pretty much just makes this work without adding any extra peroxide or damage because you don't need to make your hair lighter. So that's why it's so low. I didn't even know that they made five volume developer until I found this one and I was like, that is so cute. If you plan on staying blonde, then obviously you would want all of these tones to be more exactly the same. And in that case, you would just do a third round of bleach, not going near the roots and covering everything else. Feel free to read the instructions, but I already read them and I've used these products for a long time. So pretty much it's a one-to-one -one ratio and that's all you need to know. I'm gonna mix up enough to do all of the parts that I just bleached. And then at the end, I'm just gonna bring it through the rest of my hair when I'm rinsing it out to make it a little bit more even. I squeezed half a tube in, let's see if that works. I'm eyeballing this because it is a one-to-one -one ratio, so I'm not getting very specific on this because this is a beginner's tutorial. So I'm not even taking out my scale. I'm not even thinking about it. I'm not even in the same state as it, which is actually true because I had to leave the city. I'm using this big boy brush today that I just happened to have. No reason to get another brush, but it's wider and I'm gonna do this so fast because it does not need to process on your hair for a long time. It doesn't really need to be that perfect. It's just kind of helping get the yellowness out. And the reason that I do this quickly is because if you leave it on for too long, your hair just starts turning purple. And it's a beautiful color, but that's not what I'm going for right now. To be honest, I don't even use this brush. I just like to spread it out with my hands. It doesn't really matter what part you start at and it doesn't have to be like super precise like the bleach. It's not very harsh. It's just helping tint your hair a different color. Just make sure that you try to get everything saturated. You wanna go quickly, but you also want everything to be toned. I just mixed a tiny bit more up because I needed a little bit more than just half of the tube. My roots are starting to look very neutral rather than yellow and the whitest parts of my hair are turning purple. So that's how you know it is time to rinse this out. It's only been like three minutes since I stopped putting it in and making sure everything was even. So this stuff works really fast. I'm gonna pull the toner throughout the rest of my hair to blend it in a little bit. Leave that in for about 30 seconds. So now that everything is saturated, I'm gonna head to the shower, rinse this out, and then we are done. I decided why not and did a bleach touch up on the areas away from the roots that were slightly more yellow. And after washing it and doing a deep conditioning treatment, this is how it turned out. So I'm very happy with how it turned out. It's a very light bleach blonde, which is perfect for any color that I'm gonna dye on top of it. And I do have a color in mind, slash colors. You'll have to subscribe to see. But if you do want to stay bleach blonde and you want a slightly cooler toned color, you can leave the toner in for longer. If you want a warmer tone or any other in-between tone, there is a toner for you. And the fewer processes you do on your hair, the better for your hair. And because I have curls, I try to be very careful with that because I do want to keep them healthy and curly. So two things that I always do after I bleach my hair or even after I color it or any process really is I do a protein treatment and a deep conditioning treatment. And I'll probably make a whole video about that, how to keep your hair curly and healthy after dyeing it. But those are my top two tips. And also once I put in the dye, which is going to be a vegetable based dye, it's going to help my hair look even healthier because right now I have a lot of porosity because of the bleach. So if you're gonna be coloring on top of it, that's another pro to look forward to. If you guys still have any questions, please comment them in the section down below and I will try my best to reply to everyone. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out my socials in the links down below. I'll also have links to all the products that I used in the description box down below so it's easier for you guys to find. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you all a happy, healthy life and I will see you in the next one. Kisses. Mwah.